welcome to the Gospel Road. We're going to call it State Fair Edition, even though, well, it's the last weekend of the Iowa State Fair. Eh, yeah, we had it last weekend, too. It's 11 days of glorious fun. No, actually, it is. It's a really, really cool this year. It's uh, best days ever is uh, their line. And it's always uh, put with that uh, nothing compares to the Iowa State Fair. Of course, only fair that has a movie made about it, right? In fact, a uh, line from one of the songs, our state fair is a great state fair. It's the greatest state fair in our state, which is kind of funny because there's only one state fair in any state, right? I don't know of any states that have multiple state fairs. Hmm. But that's what they do when they make movies. That's Hollywood. <laughs> All right, we're going to look at uh, Romans 5 today. I might sound a little tired, maybe. It is hot, and it's only going to get hotter this week. I know in areas, um, you know, you get hot days every day, but uh, yeah, it was actually a pretty decent to weather this past week, but uh, this week coming up, we're going to be uh, hitting some uh, pretty brutal temperatures for us in the Midwest, so it should be fun, but here we go. It's Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand and we rejoice in our hope of sharing the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has given, been given to us. While we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Why one will hardly die for a righteous man. Though perhaps for a good man, one will dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we are now justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by death of his son much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by his life not only so but we also rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ through whom we have now received our reconciliation therefore as sin came into the world one man and one death through sin and so death spread to all men because all men sinned Sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass for if many died through one man's trespass much more have the grace of God and the free gift and the grace of that one man Jesus Christ abounded for many and the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Then as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one man's act of righteousness has leads to acquittal and life for all men. 
For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5. That's what we're looking at today. Forgiveness, grace, mercy. You know, it talks here of how Christ died for all of us and through that we are be given are, are, are given this grace so we can not have to deal with the wrath of God, right? It saves us from that wrath because we're justified by his blood. Yet every day we do not share that grace with others, right? I was riding the bus one day to the fair and um, the uh, local transit bus does the the state fair shuttle so I was doing that and it was funny because he made a comment about you don't always have to be nice but it's nice to be nice but you should always be kind hmm. you never know what someone's going through in their life at home at work so the best way to deal with that is just being kind to them. Sometimes it's a weird way of thinking about things, right? Because you're almost thinking, well, isn't it kind of the same thing? Well, yes and no. It can be a little different. But we sh do need to share kindness. A Glenn Campbell song to you know, try a little kindness. <laughs> Why aren't we being kind, right? You know, we get all this grace that is given to us, but we do not share that. Or mercy that is shown for us, but we're not sharing that with others, right? The slave, if I remember, that's how they were labeling that in the scripture, of how the his master forgave him from a debt that was owed him. But then he turned around and went to a peer, another slave that he was with, who had a debt to him and demanded his money back threw him in jail because he was not paying the debt only for the master to find out and then you know how is it that I give you you know I forgive your debt but you do not pass that along to someone else and see that's kind of the world that we live in those are the people that we deal with that someone might receive that grace and mercy but they don't turn around and share that with anybody else someone has shown kindness but they don't turn around and show that kindness they don't pass it along to anyone else because we're very narcissistic we always think about ourselves we think about what we're doing we're thinking about how we're going to get along we can't do that shouldn't be doing that but we do, because that's our world. Funny thing is, this is a story that was written, you know, 2,000 years ago. Well, I guess not quite, but... But we're still dealing with that today. Hmm. Right? How crazy is that? And I say not quite because that was one written because, because it was a parable that Jesus shared. And and then, you know, of course, he died 2,000 years ago. So it was actually put in until probably 1950 years ago. <laughs> okay. Am I being too specific? The point is, again, and I know I've said this so many times. I don't care if it was two, four... 8,000 years ago. We're doing the same stuff today as what we did then. 
were acting the same way then, still today. No different. You know, at the beginning it talks about how we rejoice in our sufferings. It's like going to the gym. I was reading that, that's what I'm thinking is, you know, going to the gym and I'm working out and the pain, the suffering I'm going through. But, you know, it provides that endurance. So the stamina, so I can walk better, I can walk farther, provides that character. You know, hope that I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to maybe live a little bit of a healthier life. Right? But how many of us, you know, do that, deal with that, think of it that way? You know, what are we doing to help us be better? And not only us being better, but to treating others better. You know, in work, in life, whatever we do every day, how are we really helping each other to be the best that they can be? Right? To be the best that we can be. How are we doing that? It's one of those things that it seems to be so simple, but yet it turns out to be so hard. Crazy? Yeah. Love everybody. Big and rich. You see that on the back of Big Kenny's guitar. Love everybody. Again, you think it would be simple, but it seems to be really hard. You know, treating others with respect. Pretty difficult. Doesn't matter what they think, doesn't matter what they believe, it doesn't matter what they do, where you are disagreeing on things. You need to support them, love them, help them. It's you planting that seed of kindness, that seed of hope, that seed of love. And by planting that, then. You know, the Holy Spirit, God takes care of the rest. He is what gets that to grow. It's not your job to save the world. It's not mine. Because one person can't do it. Not like Jesus did. We are mere mortals. Yeah, if you've watched any sci-fi movie... <laughs> We are mortals. We do not live forever. We do not have these special powers. We'd all would like to, right? We'd all like to be a superhero. Mm. Bit by a radioactive spider, be a Spider-Man, right? Get some power and be Shazam. Because some ancient god gave it to you. Yeah, it's not us. It's not what we do. It's not who we are. It's comic books, it's fairy tales, science fiction, fiction. Yeah. We can give ourselves power, though, to be kind and be nice to people every day. And we get that because we're given that supernatural power in the form of grace and mercy. Because we have that given to us. But again, how are we passing that along? I know it's hard. I know people do not deal with me very well because I'm bad at repeating myself sometimes, not remembering what I said. And I've been that, like that my entire life. People would make fun of me because of that. Or sometimes I feel like I'm talking and no one's really listening to me. It's been that way forever. Because I'll say something and then there's no response. So then I would repeat, not thinking they heard me. And then they're like, we heard you the first time. Well, I guess I'm just not important enough to let me know that you heard what I said. And yeah, yeah. Be good to each other, right? Be kind. Love one another. And you think it's easy. But it's not that easy. It's really not. In fact, I went to the fair a couple times and was talking to a friend of mine. And they're like, well, who went with you? Well, nobody. I went out by myself. I do things by myself a lot. A lot. I have been for years. There's a car show I would go downtown to every year. Pretty much always by myself. 
because there was no one else that was really interested in it, so nobody would go with me. I don't know how many times I've gone to the fair by myself because nobody was interested, or I was working. In fact, this is the first year I'm not working every day at the fair. It's kind of crazy, right? But sometimes that's just the way it works. You're going at it alone. There's no one with you. Romans 5. How is it going to help you be better this week? Yeah, let's let's look at it smaller. When you hear this over the next week, how is it going to help you be better? Okay? How's it going to help you be better tomorrow? Right? Romans 5. Be sure to read that. See how it can help you be that better person, be that better manager, parent, friend, sibling. Yeah, family member working on us professionally and personally to be that better person every day. Being better today than yesterday. Being better tomorrow than today. We're always growing. We have our goals. We're aiming, right? Like the Air Force used to tell us when I was a kid, aim high. And with those goals... As the army always said when I was a kid, not anymore, be all that you can be. You know, are you being everything that you could be? Are you doing your best? Remember, sometimes doing your best is just doing your best. Because we're not perfect. We fail. I fail daily. Romans 5. Read that. See how it can help you. If you enjoyed this, by the way, appreciate it. You can always share it on social media. But find me on social media too, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, all of my buddy Jimmy, mybuddyjimmy.com. See the uh, different things that I uh, share every day. Sometimes following my life, not always. <laughs> All my ribbon cuttings lately, though. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, you can do that. Find me there. Also, give me a rating on the platform that you're listening. I always appreciate that as well, right? Romans 5. Remember to read that. Be better, right? Be a better person. Share a little kindness. Be kind to someone every day. You should be kind to everyone every day, but be kind to someone. Because it could change their whole world. Because you have no idea what they're going through. Alright? Thank you for listening to The Gospel Road. Have a great day. God bless. Spinal adjustments provided by Dr. Chad Rolfson. The Spinal Tuning Chiropractic Center is a Des Moines area low flat fee per month unlimited chiropractic care practice. When life happens, just adjust. Schedule today at SpinalTuning.com. If you're looking for help with software, app, web development, be sure to check out my friends at IngenuityCompany.com. They believe in their clients. Software development, app development, web development, visioning, design thinking, diagramming, organizational development, strategy, they can help you at the Ingenuity Company. Find out more at IngenuityCompany.com. The Jimmy Olsen Radio Network.